Glory to you, Lord Christ. Jesus said to his disciples, I am the true vine, and my Father is the vine grower. He removes every branch in me that bears no fruit. Every branch that bears fruit, he prunes to make it bear more fruit. You've already been cleansed by the word that I have spoken to you. Abide in me as I abide in you. Just as a branch cannot bear fruit by itself unless it abides in the vine, neither can you unless you abide in me. I am the vine. You are the branches. Those who abide in me and I in them bear much fruit. Because apart from me, you can do nothing. Whoever does not abide in me is thrown away like a branch and withers. Such branches are gathered and thrown into the fire and burned. If you abide in me and my word abide in you, ask for whatever you wish, and it will be done for you. My Father is glorified by this, that you bear much fruit and become my disciples. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise, Praise to you, Lord Christ. Lord Jesus, please come and fill this place with your presence from pulpit to pew so that we can hear your word to live our lives according to your purpose. Amen. 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 Please be seated. Good morning, good morning, good morning. It's great having everybody here. This morning we're going to talk about the first reading. So take your first reading out. We're going to go through this. So we're going to work through it. We'll be done by four, five, six o'clock this evening, but we're going to work through it. <laughs> but we're going to work through it, line by line. Angel of the Lord said to Philip, Angel of the Lord said to Philip, get up and go toward the south to the road that goes down from Jerusalem to Gaza. This is a wilderness road. If you're sleeping and you hear a voice, it might be God speaking to you. But do we ignore the voice sometimes? Yes. Especially the sleep is good. <laughs> the angel of the Lord said to Philip, get up and go. By him putting get up and go, what does that tell us? That tells us that Philip was either sleeping, resting, meditating, but Philip was not actively doing anything. Get up and go. Get up and leave where you are now because I have another assignment for you. It's important that we hear and that we respond to the voice of the Lord because this was not just for Philip that he's going to be doing this. Philip is going to have an encounter and this encounter changes both of their lives. Everybody with me so far? So he's going to go down this road this is going to be the interesting part. He's going to go down this road from Jerusalem to Gaza. And it's a rough road. It's a wilderness road. So it's not like a big highway. It's got trees. It's got dangers. It's not a good road. The road from Jerusalem to Gaza in miles is about 62 miles. Okay, so you're on this long road, and you don't know why you're there. Sometimes God just tells us to get up and move. He's going to explain it as we get on the way. Trust me, I've been there. I was like, why am I doing this? And only for God to reveal it later. So just because God, in, he calls us and says, get up and go. It's like he said to Philip, he doesn't tell us where we're going. He just wants us to trust God enough to follow his word. He wants us to trust him enough just to follow where he is leading us. Because see, guess what? If he tells us where we're going, sometimes humanity kicks in. I don't know, Lord. That's a rough road. I don't know, Lord. Can't you send some, it's all of other disciples, all, can't you find somebody else to go? But he says, Philip just got up and went, trusting and following. Trusting and following. And so now, He's going on. Then he sees a chariot. And in the chariot was this Ethiopian eunuch. And we'll talk about eunuchs um, 
We'll talk about units when the camera goes off. <laughs> but an Ethiopian unit. But this wasn't just an Ethiopian, Ethiopian unit. This was from the queen of the country of Ethiopia. And not just the queen, but he's in charge of all the money. He is the banker. He is a powerful man in his own country. Everybody okay so far? So you have Philip, you have this powerful guy from a foreign country meeting at God's direction. That's the beauty of it. When we're at the place where God has called us, we get to see the purpose of why we're there in the first place. So, <laughs> the Spirit says to Philip, Go over to the chariot and join him. See, I by nature an introvert. I'm not an extrovert. I'm more of an introvert. So uh, the Lord said to me, go over to the chariot. Like, um, them people don't know me. <laughs> uh, what if they don't respond to what I'm saying? That looks like a very powerful man. So what if? What if, what if, what if? What ifs can drain us of God's potential? What ifs can drain us of God's potential? The beauty of it is that Philip shows us that if we are, if we are obedient, then we get to see what God is doing. Because see, sometimes we think it's about us, but it's not about me. This unit, this powerful man, had a spiritual need that Philip could do something about. So there it is. <clears throat> Philip goes over, and what does he hear? He hears this guy reading from what's called the suffering servant in the prophet Isaiah. He's reading <clears throat> this, and he's going, so do you understand what you read? The man says, oh, no, I, no way I'm going to be able to understand this unless someone guides me. Boom. That's Philip's opening. And Philip invites, and he invites Philip in. He invites Philip in. When we are at the place where God has designed for us to be, those persons who are seeking God will invite us in to their world, invite us in to their families, invite us in to their lives. And that's how when we take scriptures and we move it into 2020, that's what we're talking about. How to use um, these old scriptures and these things in the past and move them into 2020. Because sometimes God will use all of us, and I mean all of us, to bring the message of Jesus to those around us. He will use us, he will use us to show people, to tell people that Jesus still is love, that Jesus still is real, Jesus still is alive, Jesus still is available, he is still right here. And so, they're reading the scripture, and he starts to tell them about Jesus. Now, what happens? There's Philip, there's the eunuch. There's Philip walking, there's the eunuch in his chair. They have an encounter, and what, through the encounter, Jesus is present. Because Jesus wants the soul of the unit. It doesn't say that he was a believer. It doesn't say that he was a Christian. It doesn't say that he was like an early believer of the church or any of that. He just looked at this word of God and says, I need what's in this word. We have a world now that is so hungry. And if you don't believe it, they're grasping for any and everything that this world can offer them. That is destructive to their souls, to anything about them. But what they need and what this world is looking for is what this eunuch was looking for. I need some peace. I need some hope. I need some joy. I need to find a source of happiness in a new place. And they talked to him, and Philip was telling him about Jesus. And this guy goes all in. He doesn't just hear the word of God. He takes that word of God in, and he wants to. Have a relationship with the Lord. How do we know it? Because he found some water. Because they were, this wilderness town, there was ports where they could trade off of the water there. 
boats and stuff were coming and they were trade. So he was saying, look, there's some water. It wasn't Philip saying, look, here's some water. He said, look, here, the eunuch said, look, here is water. What is to prevent me from being baptized? This whole encounter is about him having a relationship with Jesus. Aren't you blessed? Aren't we all blessed to have that relationship with Jesus? And isn't it amazing that we have, the, he calls us all to get people excited about a relationship with Jesus. And so once they did it, he, Philip baptized him, and he came out of the water. And it said, Philip, the spirit snatched Philip away. That's a confusing statement, isn't it? Why would the spirit have snatched Philip away? Because when the eunuch comes up out of the water, he has had this fresh encounter with the Lord. And sometimes when we have an encounter, we sometimes look at the person who led us to the encounter and not who we had an encounter with. The eunuch was going to do powerful work for the Lord because of his new relationship. But Philip had other work to do. And he didn't want the unit to become dependent on Philip when he had been given him his new power. That was solely from the source of the Lord. And Philip went on to do Philip's work. Philip went on to be continue to evangelize. Philip went on to do so many things. But he started by getting up and going. The Lord will call all of us at some point to get up and go. And sometimes it's not to go on a wilderness road. Sometimes it's just to invite someone to church with you. Sometimes it's to get up and go. To invite, to just give a kind word to somebody. To send an instant message or a text message that just to wish somebody a, a good day. Get up and go. Tell, the, tell somebody about how good God is and where God is. And tell them that Jesus is still here ready to love and ready for everybody. You don't know. When he puts somebody on our mind, he puts someone on our mind so that we can send that message to, to somebody. Who knows what they're going through? You ever had a bad day and all of a sudden somebody sends you something, you're like, wow, how do they know? Today I want us to really think about when Jesus calls us to get up and go. Or sometimes we find ourselves in that hurt place. We find ourselves in that pain place. We find ourselves in that place. And somebody is going to come and check on us. Stand with us. Share with us. And when this happens, we're so grateful that Jesus knows where we are. And Jesus knows what we need. No matter what. Let's get excited when he says, get up and go. Amen. 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 Thank you.